to the fight Playing with powers they don't understand Will they fuck it all up or will they save the land? Treachery, fantasy, loitering and words They are their own worst enemies These fuckers don't need no cars Authors and dragons Authors and dragons Their powers combine Fantasy authors take on a sadistic games master. Will they survive? Fuck no. Others and dragons. Others and dragons. Hey everybody, I'm John Hartness, and I'll be playing the role of Fandingo the Fantastical newly minted even more badass bard of all trades. In real life, I write the Quincy Harker Demon Hunter novels, the Black Knight Chronicles, as well as the Bubba the Monster Hunter series of comedic horror novellas and short stories. So get out there and buy something, will you? It's Christmas, come on. Hi, I'm Joseph Brassi. I play the role of Bjorn Bjornsson, enthusiastic and violent barbarian. I was an author on the Mongoliad books. My novel, Skyfarer and Dragon Road, can be found from Angry Robot Books and everywhere books are sold. And I am the author of such non-existent titles as Why Is My Armpit Shrieking? A Meditational. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Welteri and I play Silas Main, the non-heretical horse. In real life, I write several things, including uh, Bill of the Dead, Tome of Bill, uh, the Hybrid of High Moon, and I am currently working to finish up before end of the year Kraken Hunters, which is, which is the third and final adventure of the Crypto Hunter. Hello, friends. My name is Robert Bevan. I play the role of Klaus Richter, the notorious rogue. In real life, I write the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy short stories, or novels and short stories, starting with the first book, Critical Failures. I also write a large number of the Shingles series. Most recently released was, uh, what was that? Uh, the Little Arsonist Girl, a, a Christmas Tale. And, uh, and the upcoming one, The Mummy's Curse. Look out for that in 2021. Hi there, I'm Steve Weverell, and I play Brandon Fymaster. Currently a puma, probably the best puma, definitely the best puma. In real life, I write such books as The Doomsayer Journeys with Falstaff books, and keep an eye out for Brandon Fymaster and some other guys. Coming soon. Hey everybody, I am Drew Hayes, author of Superpowers, NPCs, Fred the Vampire Accountant, and Forging Hephaestus, book one in the Villain's Code series. And I say book one because book two, Bones of the Past, is officially announced, is available for pre-order as you are hearing this. It will come out in ebook in print, on December 23rd, and audiobook will be some months after that, because this is a very long book. This is, I realize, the second longest book I've ever written. Uh, so, you know, let's let's give Amy Landon uh, a little time. If you'd like to know more about her process, we have an excellent side quest from a few months ago, but I'm just going to cut that one off with the pass. Uh, and speaking of other things we've done, this week in the Patreon, you missed us doing Jingle All the Way as part of our ongoing Tournament of Tinsel. Uh, it was a good time. We've got a f several other Christmas movies coming up. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy joining us for, be sure to hit up the Patreon after you listen to this episode. Anyway, as last we left our intrepid adventurers, they had successfully leveled up. Some had taken a drug trip from what I have to say is an impressively both kept and remembered uh, orb of drug use. You guys don't keep track of anything, anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a goddamn musician. I don't lose track of my drugs. I think you guys have like forgotten enchanted weapons and shit at some point along in this. I'm almost sure it's happened, but but I, that I have I have a legacy passed down from the great gods Mick and Keith that I cannot lose track of my drugs or the spirit of Keith Moon will come back from the dead and play drums on my balls i mean that sucks for you but it kind of doesn't suck for anybody who's not you and gets a free <laughs> keith moon really i mean i've been through worse it's fine he's kind of he's kind of incorporeal so it really yeah. kind of it's kind of him tickling my taint <laughs>
Sometimes you gotta just take one for the team. So we can get a cool <laughs> concert. Yeah. John just said tickling my taint, so I'm uh I'm I'm living with that in my head now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Starting the live vlog off with a bang. <laughs> All right, so a uh, little business at the top of the hour. There were some outstanding questions, and of course no one was necessarily committed to their choices in the moment we were recording, and with D&D you have the time to you know, peruse and think over your character growth when those moments arrive. So uh, let's kind of go through and see who all, how did everybody use their level up on their characters, and we can just go in introduction order to keep it easy. Well, Fandingo, in his um, drug-induced state, decided that dancing bears have such a long history in both music and drug culture that he's going to take the fifth-level spell Animate Objects for his new, his new ability now that he is more, more powerful, more savvy. So he can now animate up to 10 objects based on their size. So he can up animate one huge object, two large objects, five medium objects, or 10 small or tiny objects. I'm, I'm both happy and sad that the spell doesn't exist in real life because... I'm going to be honest with you. I would animate a lot of popcorn chicken to just walk itself into my mouth when I'm being lazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be good times. <laughs> yeah. So to come to life so that I may drain your innards. I mean, you can also mix and match sizes. So you can animate your large object as a fridge, and that would leave you like six small objects so then your beer can walk a six pack of beer can walk itself from your fridge to your chair i would force gubby bears to have a war on my table and then <laughs> and then eat the dead <laughs> and then i don't know that living. i i don't know that i like the idea of a living soda can vomiting into my mouth <laughs> i that would give me an erection <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say that would just be a good friday night yeah, weirdly, I have that dream every single time I close my eyes. Is that odd? You might be asking uh, the wrong crowd. Yeah, I'm enjoying this beer a lot more now. <laughs> now that it's not alive, and you appreciate that. No, now that now I'm that imagining he... it vomiting <laughs> beer into my mouth. So Bob drinks better with a boner. Okay. That's... A lot more sensual experience. <sighs> I'm now sorry I chose a spell at all. <laughs> But that's what Fandingo ended up with for bards going from 8th to ninth level. They just gain one spell. But it's 5th level. I wish I could eat honey that way. Well, if you ask her nicely. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about like a thousand bees just regurgitating <laughs> into my mouth. I was going to ask if you were going to animate the, the honey source. or the bees. <laughs> no, 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 just train the bees. I don't even need magic for this. <laughs> you only get 10. Only science. Yes. We only get 10 bees, though. No, this would be like a mass charm spell or something. <laughs> I mean, if you enchanted... So if you controlled uh, 10 queens, that effectively gives you 10 hives under you. Yeah, I'd laugh at people that, you know, with those those uh, organic... Like, they still have the honeycomb in the, in the jar. Fuck nah. you. Mine didn't even touch the comb. I just got bees jizzing straight in my tongue. Wow. It'd also be great the next time you're about to get in a fight and someone gives you the old, you and what army? Snap your fingers and the sound of buzzing fills the room. Please! <laughs> Buzz, motherfucker. Just open your mouth and out come the bees. <laughs> That's a dude at the bar you don't fuck with. <laughs> that guy's going to show up in Villains Code 3. <laughs> I mean, pest control's been around since Villains Code 1. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Uh, all right, who was ne who's next in the introduction? <laughs> uh, me. So, at ninth level, Bjorg uh, is I instead of an ability score improvement, I took Great Weapon Master, which uh, on your turn when you score a critical hit with a melee weapon or reduce a creature to zero hit points with one, you can make one melee attack again as a bonus action. Ooh. 
And before you make a melee attack with a heavy weapon that you are proficient with, you can choose to take a minus five penalty to the attack roll. If the attack hits, you add ten to the damage. Why does that sound familiar? That's, that's, that's so much better than mediocre, <laughs> mediocre weapons, Master. <laughs> uh, it's tasty. Yeah, given how how often Bjorg really uh, hits plus, that that's... That one combined with your advantage, um, brutal critical thing could be, could be a little choppy. We we are we are we are just going for destroying things. I know you guys are getting up there. You're ninth level now. You're almost halfway to the max. So you are, you're kind of capable of kicking a little ass. We'll we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right, uh, Rick. Yeah, this was uh, this was kind of a a dull one because. Uh... Technically, I'm only seventh level paladin because somebody had to take away my wait my paladin powers for two levels. Uh, so really, I just got a sacred oath feature. Yeah, that that was Torag. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those of us who can say Torag will be happy to remind you that Torag took away your paladin powers. But anyway, yeah, I just got a sacred oath feature that gives me kind of a reaction on opportunity attacks, and which is nice because I think we've done zero opportunity attacks since we started this game. <laughs> uh, all right and that is uh bob all right i had to look through a few things i i uh almost chose skull be training <laughs> <laughs> but um i ultimately went with crossbow expert let's see what that gives me uh, da, 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 da. you ignore the loading quality of crossbows with which you are proficient nice being within five nice. feet of a hostile creature doesn't impose disadvantage on your ranged attack rolls. Ooh, I don't nice. plan on getting that close anyway, but nice to have. Uh, and uh, lastly, and looks like bestly, when you use the attack action and attack with a one-handed weapon, you can use a bonus action to attack with a loaded hand crossbow you're holding. That sounds overly competent for your character. You should have went with skulking <laughs> or lurking. Something like a... Yeah, I know. I almost did, <laughs> but... um, Stab, shoot. Just you get like a plus <laughs> one to making people feel uncomfortable when you're in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I've already got that maxed out. That's true. That's all role-playing. <laughs> I don't need a fucking feat for that. <laughs> That's fair. All right, Steve, tell us what Brandon Thighmaster has added to his musculature. Nine's kind of a, a non-event. I get an extra key point, and I get a unarmored movement improvement, which is awesome. Uh, it allows me to, to run over water and up vertical surfaces for a, uh, for a certain amount of movement, um, which looks cool but I can't imagine being that useful. But the looks cool is the important part, so... You can't imagine that being useful? You're in an oh. island hopping game. You guys deal with water so much. I'm going to run out into the middle of 30 feet of water and then what? Just wily coyote into the water. <laughs> well, I mean, like, for example, if you fell overboard, you could run up the side of the boat and get back on. Yeah, but I've also I've already got athlete. I've already got the mariner feet. You know, this is just, it's making me even cooler. <laughs> but I was already really cool, so. Okay, Brandon Christ. <laughs> <laughs> he is the way, the truth, and the life of the party. Come on, Peter, get out of that boat and join me. Oh, you went in? Well, you shouldn't have skipped leg day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> My disciples must not be little bitches. Uh, and for anyone who cares, uh, Gordon Skinflint took a level of monk uh and he gained his monk specialization which went way of the shadow because he is often forgotten <laughs> <laughs> he often just uh pretends that we can't see him as well can't see him not helping the way of the inconspicuous i mean he is a, a mindless goblin much of the time yeah Almost until one of you guys is gone. I'm going to roll my hit points now, if that's all right. Sure thing. Yeah. Oh, well. Let's see. Uh, bonus. Uh, so that's plus four. Oh, shit. I forgot about uh, rolling hit points. I am up to 95. Uh, a reminder before you guys uh, start throwing dice that you have the option of taking uh, a class average instead if you don't 
Uh, yeah, well, and that's not how I roll. Yeah, that <laughs> is how I yeah. roll. It's, it's the risk <laughs> that's reward. That's exactly what I did. You can get uh, you can get better, <laughs> but you can also do worse. So that's. I did worse. Yeah. Also, how I roll. <laughs> um, I, you could probably cut this, but I still, I mean, I still don't know how to multi-class here on the character sheet. I'm still all rogue, at, uh, just saying that I have a level of wizard. <laughs> Which is also how you're playing the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's, I have a weasel. All right, so that is how everyone leveled, and then they spent their night, they got a long rest, you have all regained your full hit points, uh, and you regain half of your spent hit, half of your maximum in hit die. Uh, however, since we round up and you are level 9, that would be 4.5, meaning you recover 5 hit dice. Y'all are actually starting to make use of those, so it's relevant now. <laughs> we finally started remembering we have them. Uh, as morning dawns, the food rains from the sky, as it always does. Is it that dry stuff again? Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's the, there's a reason people have been trading you for meat, like fancier food. There's, there's sustenance. Everyone has enough to, to live and thrive on, but if you want, you know, the good stuff, that's extra. Mm. You gotta work for that. Keep an eye out for, an eye out for any animals to, uh, look delicious and weak <laughs> and uh doesn't matter if they're talking or not oh yeah and non-sentient i guess i mean uh, so how many how many days have we know. wasted out of our uh, allotment here i think we're on three or four okay. we need to get to brandon's body yep absolutely need to do that and then we need to kill the fuck who did this to us uh, did you guys have anything you wanted to do over breakfast? Break fast, chomp. Eat. Crunch, 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 crunch. Okay. All right. If uh, no one has anything else to do, then we will allow you guys to start moving on forward. And what do you know? This arena happens to be uh, at the edge of the desert area because, you know, keep things moving. Because the island's only so goddamn big. That was pretty damn big, uh, but yes, for, for <laughs> ease of all of this, we are going to just say you are right up against the desert. I mean, it's pla forest to plains to desert. That makes sense. That's a that's a progression. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense all to right. me. Well, we're going th we're going through desert. I should put my mask on, so I'm a I'll be a horse with no name. Uh. <laughs> <sighs> all right, uh, everyone, give me perception. As you arrive at the start of the deserty area, Silas rolls a ten. Fendingo, Fendingo rolls an eighteen. Bjorg rolls a seventeen. Brandon Fymaster rolls an eleven. Oh wow! Klaus rolls something less than or more than like six. Klaus rolls a twenty-one. Ooh. Damn! Very nice. Okay, uh, so we'll just start from the bottom and work our way up. So at the ten level was Silas, and let's be honest here, basically Brandon. Uh, you all can look, you see, hey, look at that, there's a gorilla, very familiar, or ape, I guess, based on his stat block, uh, there's a boulder over here, there's a tree over here, and there's sand, because... It's a desert. It's a it's desert. Really, it's not really not that interesting. Yeah. We move on up to Bjorg and Fandingo in the 1718 range. Okay, so y'all see all of that, of course. But you also notice that there's some little protrusions in the sand, like bumps, areas where the sand seems extra bunched together. Um, so, Being a cat, I think I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and Klaus, with your 21, uh, you actually spot something twinkling just over here by the tree kind of ensnarled in the base of its roots pretty indeed so what is this ape is this our ape is this gordon or is it a new ape i mean presumably it's gordon does anyone even care <laughs> not really i don't know <laughs> gordon you still an ape there you go he's just ignorant we should test out our new combat skills on him not how this works 
I need to find a crossbow store. Actually, since Steve uh, called it out, I'll go ahead and <laughs> pop this. Uh, you guys see a, a different gorilla wander over. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so, hey, have you guys been following that thing around for like a few days? Because I lost you back at that elemental fight. Huh. Huh. Does this other gorilla talk? I mean, it hasn't talked to you so far. Um, Would we listen if it did? I mean, I'd, I'd like to say it explains yeah. why the gorilla was so useless, but really it was just as useless as, as Gordon normally is. I don't know. I think the fact that the other gorilla doesn't talk is a plus in its favor. <laughs> can we trade Can we trade our horse in for one that doesn't talk? Does this gorilla, is he able to handle paperwork? Gordon, find out if this gorilla can replace you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need you to train up this gorilla in all of your tasks for backup. For backup. Yeah. All right. What would everybody uh, like to do? <laughs> hey guys, there's something twinkling by the tree beyond all the giant cat shit. One of you gorillas, go get it. <laughs> if only we had a rogue to investigate all of these dangerous things. If only. If, if I was a gorilla intern and I wanted to impress my new bosses, I'd probably be heading towards that tree right now. Why don't we go ahead and do initiatives at this point? It feels like probably a good time to get some order to the movements. Oh, God damn it! Silas rolls a 21. Bendigo rolls a 13. Brandon Firemaster rolls a 9. Bjorg rolls a 11. Gordon got a 7, as did Klaus, so, uh, Bob, go ahead and just roll a d20 for me. Coming up. Klaus rolls a 16. Alright, Gordon got a 17. He will be slightly ahead of you in initiative. That's fine. What about the other ape? Is he in initiative? I rolled them as one. <laughs> it's not a good start. Does the other ape show any initiative? <laughs> well, it's not, it's not the other ape's turn yet. This is an interview, dammit. Yeah, come on. Take the boar by the tusks. No! Don't do that. He'll mm, fuck you up. No! actually do that it might be funny no come on bjorg it'll be fun it's not like i told him to try to ride you Ooh, wait no where do you see yourself in five seconds <laughs> 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 all right stallion of the gods you are up first all right well then i will take one movement towards the tree since that's the only thing that was pointed out to me there and if, and okay. if nothing else happens then i will take a second movement toward it all right, you are moving toward a tree. That was scintillating. Indeed. Truly exciting. Uh, Stallion of the Gods, roll me a perception check. Silas Main. Silas Main. Ooh, nat 20. Okay, as you are uh, walking past, you notice the sand in this lump right here shift slightly. Hey guys, one of these shits is still alive. Oh, also, you can definitely uh, see the twinkling in the roots now. One of the shits alive, and the twi roots are twinkling. Shits? Well, uh, write that Fen down, Gorilla in turn. <laughs> Fendingo. Fendingo's going to use his full movement to fly to the tree and. Take a closer look at the, uh, take a closer look at the, uh, tree? Shiny thing. Okay, roll me a perception to make sure you can, uh, find it. Okay. 18. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep, you, uh, you are in the tree, and you're looking down, and you can see a shiny thing within the roots kind of grown around. Yep, definitely something shiny. Well, Bjorg, what shall you do? Bjorg will also head towards the tree. I'll take a double move should get me about as far as Silas. For the picky people in the audience, it's a dash. And dash, we yeah. There we go. We lost any, like, sticklers for the rules mm -hmm. about a hundred episodes ago. <laughs> I'm pretty sad. In the last edition of the game, we were like... Would you like to give me a, uh... Perception? Oh, what do you call it? Yes. Your girl's a 19. Okay. We're some perceptive motherfuckers right now. Uh, as you are aware to watch for it, you also can notice the sand over here shift slightly uh, when you are walking past. Mm. Don't like that. Nope. What do I, okay, so that's all I saw? The, the Anything on the twinkling thing? Uh, 
I mean, you can see that there's a thing there now. It's been pointed out, and there's a parrot squawking at it. Okay. Um, but but no more than just it exists. <laughs> hey, Brandon, come and dig this up. I think I saw some uh, sentient body, body lotion there. Yeah, it screams when it uh, when you put it on your body. It'd be covered in sand. Mind you, that'd be pretty good for exfoliation. Well, Brandon, you're a cat in a giant litter box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the world is my sandbox. Uh, what's going on with this rock to my 11 o'clock? Is that very tall? Can I climb that? Uh, I'm going to say it's about 10 feet high. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, you, with your... I mean, A, you can absolutely climb it because you have the ability to walk up vertical surfaces. Yeah. I mean, I just got that ability. I want to test drive it. Give it a roll. Give it a whirl. Here I am, on top of this rock. That's new. Well, well I mean... Cats do shit like that. Yeah. I didn't so, see him use claws, though. He just walked up it. <laughs> I'm just surprised that he got in this big sandbox and didn't immediately take a shit. <laughs> Which, of course, means that Klaus is now going to take a shit. Oh, yeah. For everybody uh, who's watching this, you do get to see a pretty interesting sight. Because Brandon Thymaster does not leap atop the rock. He just runs and then just runs straight up the side. It is more straightforward. Sorry, we were busy uh, watching the sand. <laughs> I, I love three of you just staring at, like, the roots of a tree while a jungle cat is doing literal magic behind you. Being great. Seems, seems completely appropriate for this game. What can I see from my vantage point other than ingrates? A, a <laughs> very festive parrot. And underqualified apes. Uh, you could throw me a perception. I'll let you know if you pick up anything fancy. Uh, oh, 11. All right, with an 11, uh, more sand, tree, animals, desert. This desert is even more boring now that I can see more of it. It doesn't get better. Uh, Gordon will amble on kind of over toward the middle to join y'all and uh, the mystery ape uh, is going to walk to here uh, and take a shit in its hand awesome ranged attack well, I, I guess he's a self star <laughs> welcome Klaus ape Klaus. I, I almost feel like that's a call out to Klaus in its own way <laughs> All right. um, Silas did call out and mention the sh this moving sand blob, right? Yes, he did. Alright, I would like to move 30 feet toward that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and shoot it. This will go well. I'll teach you for moving. I mean, I'm uh, on the tree. You guys have fun. So... Klaus, I'm going to have to say you're going to have disadvantage on this, um, but but what feats do you have regarding uh, your your shooting? Uh, I'm not going to be using either of the feats I have. I j this is just a curiosity thing. Oh, no, there's just one that uh, negates cover, so I wanted to make sure you didn't have that. That's sharpshooter. Sharpshooter, yes. Yeah, I got, I got it here. Your ranged weapon attacks ignore half cover and three quarters cover. Yeah, uh, this is probably full cover, unless it's the actual sand mound itself. Oh man, long range doesn't impose disadvantage. That's nice too. Mm -hmm. Damn. All right. Uh, so yes, you're gonna have to roll this one at disadvantage. All right, that's fine. A weasel bow. Here it goes. Ah, uh, disadvantage. Class rolls a ten. I believe that's not going to hit correct. Uh, <laughs> the arrow flies into the sand. Uh, it does not injure anything, but it does definitely disrupt whatever was hiding in there. And whatever was hiding in there is this ugly SOP. Gorilla, why did you do that? <laughs> That doesn't look good. <laughs> Does everybody, if you have Arcana trained, you can roll that. Ha ha ha, no. Nope. Not me. 18. 
All right. Not only does Fendingo have Arcana train. Uh, nope, he didn't quite use expertise in it, but yes, well I done. have Arcana trained. Fendingo, you recognize this to be an adult Kruthic. A monstrosity. Hey guys, it's a crawler. Isn't that a donut? Well, it's not really a donut, but kinda. Uh, it's a chitin-covered uh, reptile that can burrow, and you know they can burrow, uh, you know they can climb, and they're quick, and, oh, what the hell, with an 18, I'll give it to you. You know they generally hunt in packs. They usually, crawlers usually come in like half a dozen, so there's probably <laughs> more than one crawler here. Is this chocolate and vanilla or just chocolate? It's like chocolate-covered asshole. Oh, no. This is not like yeah. at all tasty. All weak. Yep. And uh, weirdly enough, guess who is after Klaus in initiative? Uh, Go ahead. Take a wild guess. The crumpet? The dumbass gorilla? Is it the... Oh, the crawler. Yes, the crawler. Oh. Oh, time for a measure. All right, whip it out. Just barely, but they can. You just shot at it, Klaus. It is running up on you, and it will make... <laughs> Two stab attacks. Who would have thought his actions would have consequences? Well, well, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. But, being that they are smaller and pack hunters, they are not individually terribly strong. So, uh, they... So it's a 11 and a 13. I don't imagine either of which will hit you. Don't worry, Klaus. They're individually not very strong. <laughs> <laughs> As a weasel, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, what, what is your AC, Klaus? Uh, 18. All right, 18 means those both are misses. Uh, you guys said something about consequences? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the uh, the Kruthik rears back its head as it's racing and slashing and lets out just a, a real screeching wail of a noise. <laughs> oh, God! As usual, it seems that we're all going to suffer the consequences of mm. your actions, Klaus. What a surprise. Isn't that what D&D's about? Well, Stallion of the Gods? Well, that is, as is written in the one true book of Tornag, confectionaries are sinful. Uh. <laughs> so I will shoot two uh, horse bolts at it. First is a 16, and the second hits a 26. Uh, the first one misses. Well, then it does, the second one does 11. All right. And uh, you fire a bolt into its side, and it. It lets out a, a piercing screech, but uh, is, you know, otherwise unbothered. All right, and for my movement, I will uh, come up here to the tree, you know, just in case I need to uh, grab whatever's there. All right, Fendingo. Fendingo is going to fly to the rock and change back into his bipedal half-elf form. Okay. And that will be in action. So you are returning to Fandingo. Did you come over here just to rub that in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Unbelievable. All right. Fandingo poofed out of your parrot form. Sailor Moon transformation style back into Fandingo the Fantastical. You know, sometimes I forget just how pretty I am in this form. It's nice to remember. All right, Bjorg. Oh, let's see here. Bjorg is going to transform into his current, into his real body as well. Um, and then he is going to make for make for the rock as well. But he is going to stay on the ground. Why don't you all just change into human form, guys? <laughs> that's, that's not insensitive at all. Bjorg is going to, <laughs> Bjorg is going to flex. <laughs> Flex those big northern muscles. All right, Bjorg uh, in pig form starts running, leaps into the air. Uh, he crashes against a star-filled sky, spinning and twirling, transforming Whoosh. back into Bjorg Bjornsson. Puts his two puts two fingers up in front of his face and goes ting. <laughs> it's an excellent flex. It's flexlent. <laughs> Brandon Thymus. <laughs> Oh, fuck you guys, I'm gonna go kill this dinosaur. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, you wanna do it on your human. Oh, wait, sorry. 
Brandon Firemaster tries to uh, flip his middle finger up, realizes he can't, just grumbles all the way to this dinosaur. <laughs> okay, two attacks. Actually, I will use the pounce attack. Uh, the advantage of being in my puma form. Pounce. Oh, ten. Uh, yeah, that's not going to do it. <laughs> well, I will also bite it. Jump. Twelve. Yep. Having no opposable thumbs <laughs> turned out to be a real advantage there. Uh, that is also a miss. Okay. I mean, damn, son. Well, introductions have been made. Let's see where this goes. Uh, all right. Well, Gordon's here. Might as well throw a punch. What the hell? Wait, what? Uh, all right. And, oh, well, he nat 20 for eight whole damage. Whoa. Which is still eight more than Brandon did. <laughs> Party time. <laughs> Nicely done, Gorilla Intern. See, Gordon, you could learn a thing or two from this guy. <laughs> uh, speaking of Gorilla Intern, we're going to do a D4. Say Klaus is one. Gordon is two, Kruthik is three, and Brandon is four. Oh, God. Well. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the good news is they probably don't have a very good uh, dex throw. <laughs> probably, but I should imagine they're about to nat 20, <laughs> given how my uh, luck has gone so far this game. 13. No, it does not meet my dex. Uh, my AC, sorry. There you go. Uh, all right, so the poo flings past your head. Gordon, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I feel like if it was me, I probably would have hit. Based on, <laughs> you know, I just hit this thing. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. Also, motivation. All right, Klaus. All right, um, I can take a action to disengage, is that right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to advise you to... Uh, <laughs> Think back on something we have perhaps discussed on rogue-specific abilities. Something about flanking. That's not yes. what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh. oh, well, that's what I was thinking about. So we are uh, to your turn, and remember, Klaus, rogues can disengage as a free action. Oh, all right. Great. Then I would like to do that. Does that mean I move five feet, or...? That means you you can move outside of uh, the threatened range as an or like you have your yeah. your free action you still have your action and your move right yep I mean all right so I will but the free action is all right is it like a five foot move is disengage or is the free action no, no, no. or disengage no, is the ability sorry. to move outside of a threatened range without taking an attack of opportunity so what is the threatened range uh, where you are right now melee range so how far can I move as a free action? Again, you don't get to move as a free action. I'm sorry. All right. So normally moving inside an opponent's threatened range, somewhere where they can reach out and hit you, uh, means that they get to reach out and hit you as a reaction. But oh. disengage allows you to make the movement without getting that attack of opportunity. Um, and now, okay. So normally how disengage worked is you use your action for it, and then you have your move left. But as a rogue, you get you get one free action, and so you use that, and that leaves your normal action and your move uh, both unused. Okay. I um, almost understand. But here's what I just want to do. I want to, you know, as long as I'm not going to attack, I just want to move a little bit out of the way. I'll move over to uh, Mr. Shipflinger, and, um, yeah, since he's engaged with two, two other opponents, I would like to sharpshooter and sneak attack him. Those are both your rights. Go for it. Okay. All right, does a 16 hit? It no. It does not. Uh, uh, shit, it doesn't an matter because that was an 11. Yeah, yes. you, you took five off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. But if it makes you better, 16 would not have hit uh, anyway. Well, that doesn't really... Uh, but good to know. All right. All right. Good luck, guys. <laughs> well, uh, as Klaus runs away, uh, and this thing screeches, there's more rustling in the sand. Oh, dear. Uh, so I'm going to explain why there's a glowing green orb. Uh, when this one pops out, it bursts uh, out of its sand den, 
Um, and it reveals a shiny orb. So that is there. It's a crawler with frosting. All right, and uh, they are going to swarm because they are pack hunters, and that is what they do. You're welcome, guys. You got this, Brandon. Ah, sure would be convenient to be in my actual body right now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, part of pack tactics is that the they all have advantage because they have, uh, well, an ally within five feet of you. Wish I had an ally in five feet of me. <laughs> You've got Gordon. Uh. <laughs> All right. To be fair, Gordon's the only one that's done any damage, right? Um. That's no, true. no, no. Silas Main uh, shot it with an arrow. Oh. All right. Good. Still did more damage than Brandon. Rolled advantage. Okay. Uh. I, I will let you choose. Would you like the first two or the second two, Brandon? First two. First two. Twenty. Eighteen. Both hit. All right, uh, next up for Gorteen and 15. Either hit. I have not made a single good decision this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are you still pretty good on hit points, Brandon? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. The funny part is that the bit of it that's working it. So, uh, <laughs> Steve, you get slashed for 6 and 9, so 15 total. Uh, as Gordon is, like, dodging and weaving and bobbing in and out of the, the way, with more nimbleness than you might think a, a ape should have. Oh. Well, good for him. Yeah. As a as a monk, you recognize unarmored defense when you see it. Mm. Monkey monk. I like it. Ah. Uh. Monkey monk and the funky bunch. All right, stallion of the gods, you are up. All right. Well, the one I have already damaged... Why don't I keep pouring it onto him? Okie dokie. I will pour a uh, Divine Smite if uh, if at least one hits. Let's have at it. 22. And the other one is a miss. But 22 hits. It's okay. Their AC is not that good. <laughs> it's shockingly good for their low AC, for their low CR. Though. All right. So it does 9 Radiant and 16 uh, from the arrow. So 20, 25 right. total. And with that, the first Kruthik is down. The Silas Main fires a glowing arrow, and it screeches through the air and parts this thing's brains like the Red Sea. <laughs> Literally nice splashes one. on Brandon and Gordon. Oh, oh dear. All right, Fandingo. Think you can top that with your fancy real people fingers? Well, I was. When there was just one of them, I was going to throw a bunch of caltrips out and animate caltrips to attack. But since they conveniently bunched up like that, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I feel like there's only one thing I can do. Well, uh, it's a good good day to have evasion, Brent. <laughs> Luckily, you have that. Mm. This might really suck for Gordon, though. Life sucks for Gordon. Let's be... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to drop a fireball right on the living one that's next to Gordon. Yeah. All right. So I just assume you're going to hit uh everybody in the range. Yeah. All right. Just all of those. Got it. Yeah. Okie dokie. Let's see. <laughs> so that's going to be my spell save DC is 16. And I'm going to go ahead and cast that as a fourth level spell to add an extra D6 of damage. Alrighty. Uh, that's, that's, oh, good. That's not one I have proficient. Oh, you know what? I don't even have that. Cause I, oh, 21! <laughs> Alright. Gordon takes half damage. Woo! Uh, by the way, that's a 35-point fireball. Uh, Brandon Thighmaster. <laughs> Sorry. You will be when I rip your lungs out. 26. <laughs> don't fuck with the guy who heals you. Uh, I don't know if this uh, balances out. I, is, is this fire is that, healing is that me? What this is, is that what that is? <laughs> is this burning <laughs> sensation a good thing? He's not actually doing fire any damage to steel. you, Brandon, because you made the save with evasion. Yeah, well, it's, there's a principle at stake here, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you literally take no damage, right? For once, I am not in the center of it. I like to imagine... Only because you're behind me in initiative. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine Brandon like riding the shockwave the same way that he uh, 
like rides the the vertical surfaces in water. You're like, yeah, I can do this now too. Just walk Whatever. up the explosion. Nobody told me I couldn't do it. That's funny. I think it's more like a cat just jumping 20 feet straight up in the air. Yeah, it's like he was a house cat on a subwoofer. Um, okay, these guys get to make their save mm-hmm. as well. Uh, I'm going to go individually because there's only three of them. So, three deck saves. Number one, number two, number three. All right, half well, damage for the middle one, and the other two take 35. So, yes, with my with my real person fingers, I can do better than 25 damage since you asked. All right. All right. Uh, there's a very smoky ape, but he is still standing. <laughs> Can I throw caltrips out on the ground as a bonus action? I don't believe that's a bonus. <laughs> okay. All right, Bjorg. All right. Gonna... They're all still standing. Bjorg is going to just run right at this one to uh, to Brandon's uh, whatever o'clock. I'm not good at that. And we're going to rage... We're going to drop two attacks. And are we going to... <laughs> we're raging. And uh, no, we're not We're not doing Great Weapon Master yet. No, no, I was asking if you were... Go- well, you've already rolled him, but uh, remember, you have to declare your brutal... Court- your, your oh, brutal- right. Okay. Didn't I didn't declare the, that this time ahead of time. Yeah. Didn't matter in this event because you, uh, you got 24 and 29 on your roll. Yeah, 24 and 29. We're going to roll damage now. 16 and 13. Ah, oh, boy. You remember how, like, Stallion split the, the head of that one? You didn't use the the sharp end of your sword. <laughs> Just flat of the blade, car- flat of the blade carve it. You literally hit this thing down like a whack-a-mole, and it exploded in goo. You have put it back, let's see, it had four hit points left, and you dealt... What? Twenty nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. It stopped it's existing. Five. Yeah. It is more liquid than solid. Flower crown. Now, what's that new thing where you, if you kill something, you can take another attack? Uh, I didn't use great Weapon, great weapon master on this turn, so. Uh, I thought that was just a thing. Yeah. If you score a critical hit with a melee weapon or reduce a creature to zero hit points with one. You can make mu- one melee weapon attack as a bonus action. Okay. Now, nice you don't step. have the range to hit anything. Yeah, no. Um, but do you have any movement left? I have movement left. If you have movement left, you may use it. All right, I'm moving right ahead uh, through the goop and to the next one. Okay, you have one melee weapon attack as a bonus action. All right, let's do this. Jorg's going to rear back and do that raging chop. Yeah, that's going to get you there. And that is a that is a uh, twenty two. Twenty two will hit. All right. That's soup. That is uh holy shit. Don't don't even bother adding. Oh, this guy made his save actually, so he has oh, he has more. Hit okay, points. that one. Oh, he's still fucked. Twenty three damage. Mm, that actually barely kills him. <laughs> Carving him in half. <laughs> or just maybe chop the top of his brain off. Um. Okay, if you still have movement... Oh, no, you only get that once. No, I only get that once, yeah. All right. That would be dangerous without that, yeah. (laughs) All right, Brandon. (laughs) If you think you can handle one. (laughs) There's one standing. Bjorn just looks at Brandon and goes, I left one for (laughs) you! Bjorn basically charged straight through that first one. (laughs) Like, just like a train on the tracks. Hey, I softened him up. (laughs) Uh... I have a point. Maybe I'll just um, burn a key point to use my disengage action and go check out this orb. (laughs) 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 He has decided that this fight is not worth his time. He's a cat. What does the orb do? Uh, You sniff it, um, and it appears to be made of some sort of metal. Uh, There's like the glow is coming from there's a little bit of like a shine on the surface it's not quite glass but it is crystalline um and there seems to be a little bit of like a soft uh glow when it hits the light Ooh. yeah I'll, I'll just bat this around a bit while these guys are taking care of these dinosaurs yeah gordon is uh 
Gordon knows where he is best used, and it's not when he's barely standing <laughs> in this form uh, against something that's been shrugging off attacks. He's gonna let that fly. Uh, and Sorry, Gordon. Klaus, uh, roll me a dex save. What about a ship flinger? That's why you're rolling a dex save. That's why you're rolling a dex save. Oh. Oh, he's Oh man, he's got to wipe his ass with something. That's literally where I'm going thing. with this. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> dude, <laughs> small and fluffy I, and just the right size. I have heard, but you're also a rogue, so I'm not super worried about your deck skills. I am. <laughs> have you seen my rolls? I haven't seen a roll pop up yet. I know. I've. I was just wanted to say. I used to think you were hilarious. Now I'm disappointed. <laughs> Class rolls a 24. All right. The hand closes down on nothing as you nimbly dash aside, as one might expect of a rogue of your dexterity caliber. This is 100% that old joke about the bear shitting in the woods. And then he looks over at the rabbit and says, hey, does shit stick to your fur? No. Why? Good. And then the bear wipes his ass with the rabbit. <laughs> he asked shit. first. Let's consider. <laughs> uh, all right. Klaus. One still standing. All right, um, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, because that worked so well. You're going to do the take take five off for the ten damage? That, that's right. And uh, I'm still close enough for a sneak attack, I believe. Let's double check. Yes. Oh, but no, I'm not, because he has to be engaged with someone yeah, else. Yeah, all of the... Uh... All right, well, forget about it. Uh, I'm still doing the sharpshooter. All right. All right, 15. 15 will not no. hit. Yeah, well, I will move away from my no longer friend, shit gorilla, <laughs> and I'll go move behind Gordon. Um, history has proven that that might not be the safest place on the battlefield. Just throwing well, it out there. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm Klaus gonna... is like, fuck it. It's not the first time you've blown me up, asshole. I'm gonna say that uh, that. The Kruthik is torn between Bjorg, who just murdered his friends, and Brandon, who he was already slicing up on. Uh, so we're just going to say Bjorg 1, Brandon 2. All right, Brandon Thighmaster. Brilliant. Uh, but it doesn't have advantage, because all of his friends are dead. <laughs> uh, 17 and a 22. 22 hits. All right. Swings in and hits with a 6 damage. Take that. Six damage. All right, Stallion of the Gods. <sighs> Guess uh, Brandon needs saving again. <laughs> Nat one and a miss. Uh, roll me a d20. A five. Ah, you're all right. Uh, you, uh, you fire just into the rock, and your 15 misses. Yeah, I just wasn't feeling that one. <laughs> well, as long as I didn't feel that one. <laughs> I think he was closer to hitting me than he was the little dinosaur fucker. Ah, speaking of probably hitting Brandon while aiming at the dinosaur fucker, Fandango. <laughs> what <laughs> this time would you like to unleash this time? <laughs> we're going to be a little more precise this time. We're going to cast Firebolt at the last shithead standing. So that's a ranged spell attack. I think that one's just mm. AC as normal. Doesn't look like it's going to help because that's a 16. 16 will not do it. Bjorg. All right. We are going to charge this last one. Just straight over there. Just explode it all over Brandon. And, uh... <laughs> Brandon, I'm coming! Oh, God. Did not need to know that. <laughs> and that is... Oh, right. I get two of them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you the time, Joe. You're going to need the second one. <laughs> yeah. It's a 22 and a 24. Let's just, let's just find out for the funsies. That's 12 and 19. So that's 31 points of damage. Yes. On a creature that had four hit points left. I'm here! Yeah, Bjorg and it's runs not. over and, like, takes a bounding leap uh, and just, like, swings his sword. It's like, hooray! And literally just cleaves this thing in twain. Flower crown! Yeah, it's, you are, Damn your fur is really coated in the goo, man. It, well, it, it is, uh, it is splashed doing. all over. Well... And uh, so he, that one is dead. And Brandon Thighmaster, why don't you give me a perception check real quick? 
that's what happens when he comes. I don't want to date any North women. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Covered in viscera. <laughs> Actually, I think everybody can have this uh, perception check. It's good for the skin. 17 for Fendinga. 10 for Silas. 16 for Klaus. That is a natural one for Bjorn. Right. You've got Kruthik in your eye. So, mm, tasty Fendingo, Fendingo, Klaus, and Silas all notice a slight rumble, and uh, the point where Stallion of the Gods' arrow has uh, punctured into the rock, uh, the cracks are widening, and the rock is starting to shake. Oh, fuck. And that is where we are going to leave it for this episode of Authors and Dragons on the game portion. But fear not, as you know, we are not done because while we're playing, Joe's been doing the live blog over at facebook.com slash authors and dragons and we take questions that we're going to dive into after we dive into the ones from the Discord because they're our Patreon folks and that means they get to cut the line. I feel like you already know how this part works because we hit it at the beginning of the episode. So that's enough vamping. Rick? Yeah, we got a, we got a lot on the Discord tonight. Excellent. So, Woo! so let's see here. Uh, our friend, uh, well, first our friend uh, Fluffed says it's his sister's twenty-first birthday today. You know, one can he get a can he can he get a fuck you Noel? Three, two, fuck, fuck you, you Noel. Noel. Fuck you, Noel. Fuck you, friend. <laughs> fuck you and your holiday, Noel. And uh, while you're getting fucked, Noel, she wants to know what are some drink recommendations for a first timer. Oh boy. Oh, I mean, I started with rot gut tequila, but I was eleven, so I so I healed quicker. What am I gonna wreck? Okay, I have. It depends on what you like. Um, I like things that are a little sweet. Um, so you know, obviously, you don't know what you like yet. But um, I'm gonna recommend Baron Jaeger Honey Liquor, which is uh, it's basically uh, German. According to legend, the Germans created it to get bears drunk so they could then kill them. Uh, it basically tastes like alcoholic honey. Um, and uh, in, re- in reality, is... they're just trying to fuck the bears. <laughs> That's entirely possible. I, I have a story about that. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a well, it's not really a story. It's a painting. Um, but uh, the uh, other one I recommend is I really like a good tawny port. I, I, it's what I usually drink on game nights. Wish I had a painting of a guy fucking a bear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where do you buy that? Just, it's not really a story. It's a painting. Does not answer oh, questions. It's a painting. It's a it's a painting. So it's a painting um, from Norway. Of it's a dude called, fucking a bear. <laughs> uh, sort of. It's called an unfortunate bear hunt, and it basically is a bunch of Norwegian bear hunters. Who have been? Who are being? It was, a, it was fortunate who, who for somebody. Grabbed by bears, and like one of them is being ridden by a bear, and the other one is being like sat on by a bear, and it really looks like the bears are fucking hunters. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Just look up an unfortunate. Yeah, bear to... I did, yeah. and no one else ever should. <laughs> Well, now I have to. The Norwegians are great. Jesus Christ. This also sounds like an excellent name for a gay porno. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe don't take Joe's advice. Oh, wow. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So everyone look up and everyone listening in, look up an unfortunate bear hunt. Alternatively, that main bear looks like he could be setting up a dude for a power bomb. Entirely possible. Or a pile driver. Yeah. Both of which also belong in gay porn. Yeah, the the dude on the right also looks like he's pile driving that other guy, but you know. That guy is torso deep in that <laughs> bear's vagina. <laughs> <laughs> and, All right. and the bear is spanking <laughs> him. What is the rest what what is everyone else's drink, Rex? <laughs> yeah, we gotta get off the bear fighting or we're never. Right gonna. now it's brain bleach. <laughs> cider. If you right. like this... uh if you're starting out, cider is generally sweet but tart. It's nicely balanced. There's plenty of good ones kind of all over. If you happen to live in an area that has access to um, Bishop Cider, I really love their Blood Orange. Uh, the Crackberry, which is Cranberry Blackberry Cider, is amazing. Um, so uh, cider's, a, cider's a strong opening. And it's not too alcoholic, so you should be able to control your pace a little. And he had me right there with him until he got to not too alcoholic because i'm a big fan of woodchuck pear cider and 
it tastes like candy and will put you on your ass. So, uh, yeah, woodchuck pear cider. Oh, yeah. I mean, you drink enough of them, they all will, but like compared to if you were trying to start with cocktails, I feel like that's a more dangerous game. Like I said, when... bro, I started with I started with Jose Cuervo. Oh, I, I started doing just straight liquor. I didn't drink a beer until after college. All I did was liquor. I was in college when I started drinking beer, but I mean, not like real beer. It was Milwaukee's Beast. I'm going to say... When my kids... Uh, no, go oh, go, go okay. ahead, so you're talking about your kids drinking. Oh. Um, <laughs> When my kids were old enough to eat solid food, I I made this concoction of like every vegetable I could find in the supermarket and some beef and some rice and stuff, and I I mixed it all into this boiling green goop, and I and that's what I fed them because they didn't know what good food tasted like, so they just were happy with this nutritionist glop and that's what i would recommend that's why i would recommend you just start with some cold and refreshing bud light you don't know what good stuff is this will do the job it won't get you drunk too fast and it's cheap happy birthday fuck you i was gonna i was gonna say you're growing you're growing up you know you're finally like moving away from the kids stuff, but you're still used to the kids stuff. So you move from chocolate milk to Kahlua and cream. Yeah. Just skip to the cocaine. <laughs> I, I, Kahlua was just mentioned and I, I, I may have said this in the podcast before, but I had a friend who she was, uh, she was at, she was at home and she wanted to, she wanted a white Russian, but she didn't have, uh, she only had like vodka and, uh, soy milk so she mixed them together and she's like oh my god i've invented the white girl russian <laughs> that's beautiful <laughs> um i feel like a, a liqueur i think we talked about it on a recent episode already but rum chata always delicious um oh that was brodeo that we we talked about rum chata on uh yeah it's it's uh an orchata based liquor drink it's super super good um it's yeah, again it's a liqueur so it's not so high alcoholic Although it can make cocktails dangerous. I had a buddy who used to make vodka martinis and put like a few drops of rum chata in there to mask most of the burn. And uh, yeah, you could you could crush through those things at a pace that was not sustainable. Yeah, and you know, this is the kind of age where you just want to be just plowing through that cocktail menu. Just trying everything while you're young and strong before you eventually realize <laughs> that nothing's better than beer. <laughs> no, Noel, take note. I'm the only one that cares about you. <laughs> All right. Probably All right. Let's, let's, move it. let's move on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're go for it. All right. Well, our friend Zach of All Trades asks, "What's the stupidest argument you've ever been a part of?" Are we going to count the last four years of politics? <laughs> Are we going to count debating debating Bob on who gives more of a shit about Noel? I thought you said the last four years of Authors and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was convinced that's what no, we, don't, we don't argue that much. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but when we do... Oh boy. I like to think this entire podcast is one long argument. I think it's, a, I think it's an argument for no one ever listening to us. <laughs> I, I, I had one that, just, that I just God, remember because... Uh, it was an old friend of mine. They were a bit of a Luddite, and uh, they were claiming they would never get a computer because people would hack into their bank account. And I was like, well, then just don't put your bank information on the computer. But they'll still be able to get into my bank account. Then don't connect no. the computer online. Yeah, Them <laughs> having a computer or not is not going to protect them. If you know, the bank has their shit Online, yeah, they were convinced know, that like a computer was some supernatural portal to, directly to their bank account. <laughs> and that is how every movie that involves computers has portrayed it working. Yeah, all right, that's fair. I don't know a lot about computers, but I watched a lot of movies in the 90s, and I think that's how it works, Rick. So, <laughs> if, if, I mean, if somebody's wearing a leather jacket and sunglasses and they're on a computer, they can get into your bank account. That's how it works. I mean, I feel like mine is probably something related to comic books or superheroes or some sort of, like, 
deeply layered, way too specific nerd shit that I cared about more when I was younger. <laughs> I'm pretty sure mine has to do with professional wrestling. I've I've got one. I uh, I posited this argument, and it was I knew it was stupid, but I was just I was trying to make it work, I, and I was pretty drunk. But I said, if you fell out of a plane with a, with no parachute or anything over open water it wouldn't be likely but it would be possible to like just stretch out your clothes like a flying squirrel and <laughs> and survive the landing and no no as stupid as this sounds this was well I mean, this isn't going to help me my argument any but this was like you know what happened in uh the angels and demons book that's true <laughs> This was after I proposed it, mind you. Well, somebody out there thought you were right. People have survived yeah. falling out of planes. I don't know whether they did the whole flying squirrel thing, but, you know, if it helps your chances, you, you may as well. It does increase your air resistance and lower your speed. I mean, now, whether or not it's below a, a speed that will kill yeah. you, but it doesn't hurt, I'm sure. Well, I, I mean, I, I was going... I went further into it, so I'm pretty sure... Uh, I wasn't arguing with Dan Brown, but um, I was saying, all right, you 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 lower your speed as much as you can, and then right before you hit the water, you tuck into a cannonball. Oh no, that sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like well, that sounds like hitting a brick wall at 200 miles an hour. That sounds like an exercise. And hey, look, I'm a flying squirrel that watches I break every bone in my body. That just sounds like a a way to die more aggressively. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I guess I'll be the only one surviving that plane abandonment. I am not abandoning a plane while it is in the air. Bob, just next time we're flying to A and D Con, Bob gets up midway through the flight. I told you, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what? Uh, Out he goes. There was a woman who survived uh, falling out of a plane, and I really wish uh, she just said. Like, I, you know, you've fallen out of a plane. You, like, fell for two miles and you're still miraculously alive. Fucked up, but alive. She should have just said, well, what happened was, is I just flapped my arms really hard. <laughs> just really <laughs> fucked with science. But what she actually said was... <laughs> yeah, what she really said was, stop asking me stupid questions yeah. and give me more morphine. <laughs> I, uh, I've had so many so many stupid fucking conversations about swords but probably uh, I don't know I'm, I'm trying to think of one that's just really really dumb um, there was the guy who walked into a martial arts demonstration we were doing and literally said in this voice this is how the Persian assassins use their weapons and then he pulled out two wooden knives and started spinning in a circle but was he wrong? He was incredibly wrong. I don't know. I'm picturing in my head and it looks pretty cool. <laughs> it's, it's coming from this voice. And and yeah, it was it was just stupid. I also had a I had a this is less of a dumb argument, but this is this is I had a guy come in who was um very, very not in not in shape. Not like overweight or anything, just just he was not in good physical condition. And I asked him to I was like telling him how to move his hips properly and you know he was like I'm like okay flex your glutes and he goes how do I do that <laughs> clench your ass how do how do I do that I I lack language Joe you might have been coming on to you mate <laughs> <laughs> Joe just yeah. showed him the bear picture <laughs> just fucking do just... like these bears do but not to me he was after a grab <laughs> show me uh, I get in pointless arguments all the time. I've got nothing better to do. I think I used to be a lot worse at it when I was younger. I do remember. I think there's not been a single good friend I've had that hasn't just blown up at me after I've started an argument with them. Like, even like two lines into an argument, they've just went, you know, just like really blown up at me. Which, now that I think about it, tells me that I must have been getting into pointless arguments with them a lot. 
it's like, I can only remember it's like, oh, that that time when he was entirely unreasonable just because I was right as usual. But but um, yeah, now looking back on it, I'm starting to see a pattern. <laughs> but then again, you know, pointless arguments is good podcast fodder, isn't it? Very much so. I'm just imagining somebody, somebody there trying to enjoy their beer and. And Steve's just in their ear being like, no, all you got to do is, all you got to do is flap your arms and make squirrel noises. <laughs> oh, you know, I might not be wrong. We don't know. You'll only find yeah. out one way. We'll save that for another podcast. All right. Well, here's a game related one. Our friend Paladin Steve asks, are there any plans to do more side quests with that paranormal investigator game or other one or two shot games? Yeah, I think uh, all of the stuff that we have done on SideQuest is kind of always there in the back of our mind as an option. Um, the ones that y'all respond to and you ask for are the ones, of course, we keep a little higher up on the, you know, next time we have an opportunity, we should do this. Um, and that's why I think we'll definitely return to, because it's one we, we all really enjoyed. Uh, but some of them we also try to save for times when it's best used. Like, we try not to overdo everyone as John because it can be such a fun one every now and then. I definitely wouldn't mind uh, returning to the Paranormal Investigator one. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, I liked that one. But let's be real. Plans is such a specific word to be using with this bunch. (laughs) I mean, plans. It just sounds like planning. I also that part of the reason we don't take on a ton of new games on side quests is that every time we do one, it necessitates getting everybody involved up to speed on the rule system and whatnot. And so that can be a bit of a time commitment in addition to the episodes every week and everything. But also back to John's point, those of those of you on the Stadtdorf level, um, you see how we do our ATMs. It's like, okay, we're doing an ATM in five minutes. (laughs) That's our level of, <laughs> of, of figuring things out yeah. in advance. We try to give at least an hour or two at minimum. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes we're cutting it. Because yeah. clo- sometimes it's just a matter of when can we all line up our schedules. We might have some really exciting side quest games planned. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll know that when you do, or roughly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might have a week's lead time on you guys. Hmm. Sometimes. Might. All right, well, that's about time for us to mosey on over to the Facebook questions and see what those folks have been wondering about. Joe, why don't you walk us into a question from the Facebook? All right, uh, our friend Nelson asks, if Judge Hungry... And, uh, hold on one second, my daughter needs a hug. Be right back. Sure. I mean, goddamn, Joe, so do I. I'm leaving that in. That's delightful. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, I'm muted, so y'all didn't have to listen to my cat be demanding. All right, I'm back. Uh, our friend Nelson asks, if Judge Hungry and Gunther were turned into animals on the island of animals, what would they be turned into? Uh, I'm going to say Gunther is pretty easy in that he would be a three-toed sloth. Yeah. Uh, just that perpetual stone. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I can see that. Uh, Judge Hungry. I want to say a lion majestic and regal king of the jungle yeah yeah i think that fits fits judge hungry and quite we'll claw well. your fucking face off i was gonna say i see him more as a badger <laughs> but a really big one of course you do you filthy criminal <laughs> i'm gonna say judge hungry is noel's mom <laughs> <laughs> deep well, cut bob deep there's cut. an end to that special relationship mm. yeah nice knowing you noel <laughs> She wanted to fuck you. I gave it to her. I gave her an extra special one. Be wary of the fuck you's request. You might not get the one you're expecting. They might never end. It's not the fuck you you wanted, but it's the fuck you you deserve. This is, yeah. It's a special birthday. <laughs> it's the magic time. Um, do to move on to the next one? Yeah, <laughs> our friend going down uh, for some nostalgia. Our friend Melanie says, "What was asks what was your favorite toy as a kid?" Mm, good question. Uh, all right, that one that one's easy. I got uh, one Christmas. All I wanted was the Shogun Warriors Godzilla, <laughs> and that showed up, and that was just my favorite thing for years until I went away to college, and I'm pretty sure my mo- my mother <laughs> sold it, <laughs> but I'm not bitter or anything. 
Uh, I was a Lego kid. Yeah, me too. I was going to say that. My giant crate of Legos. I didn't even care what the sets were. I just liked having all those fucking bricks and building whatever I wanted. Yeah. Mostly giant spaceships. I'd say my, uh, my NES. I, I loved playing fucking video games as a kid. Like, just... I think back on the amount of time I could spend on that activity, and it blows my mind. I can't fathom that level of focus. I think mine might have been Lincoln Logs. Oh, shit, yeah, my dad got my son some of those. I loved those things. I'm glad they still make them. I didn't know they did. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they're, they're not as uh, hefty as the older ones, but they're, they still well, make them. Well, I mean, that was, the, that was the other fun part of Lincoln Logs, was throwing them at your friends. <laughs> I was going to say, John. John's just remembering being, like, drunk in college and playing with playing with his own shit. <laughs> Well, no, I didn't say. Uh, I didn't respond with other than my dick, because. Well. Let's face it. That's every guy's favorite toy. True. It's true. I don't think I can top that. I, I don't know. If uh, we're talking non video game stuff, uh, I just remember really liking He Man figures when I was little. I just, there was something. They're also, when you think about it, completely fucking insane. <laughs> I, if we're taking <laughs> video game stuff off the table, then I would say uh, my Ninja Turtles uh, action figures. Ninja stuff. Turtles was nearly yeah. my first choice, but I've, I've just got more fond memories, yeah. I think, because I was younger and there were more of them lying around of He-Man figures. Yeah, and when it's Ninja Turtles versus He-Man figures, it's like, oh, I have Donatello. Yeah, well, I have Fisto. <laughs> Fisto. Yeah. I, I mean, as an adult, I can see it, but man, as a kid, I bled Cowabunga Green. I mean, I loved Fisto, and then I lost his fist, and I never found it again. God knows where it went. Mm. Uh, it went to join all the other lost Fisto fists somewhere in the world. I really loved his uh, now very problematic and racist counterpart, because I loved ninjas, and uh, I loved He-Man figures, and it was great to have a He-Man figure ninja, even if, looking back, it was a very racist He-Man figure. But I kind of got in on the... You know the, the generations of He-Man figures they had before it all just went insane and you couldn't actually find an original He-Man anymore. It was just that stupid B-Guy and if you didn't want the B-Guy you were fucked. <laughs> uh, I, my fondest memory is the He-Man figures from then because they're all just fucking weird. Cyclone was weird. Uh, that Mantis guy, that, that He-Man figure that was just body parts that you put together. Stink it's like they're really running out of ideas and I love it. Yeah, Stinkor. <laughs> the scratch and sniff he-man figure <laughs> i mean you started with <laughs> mechanic and you know you went downhill from there and it was beautiful what a wonderful time to be alive the toys that made us episode on the he-man figures was great and i i must have i'm I, yeah, I lost the fucking train on the he-man figures i i had them i didn't i didn't have all this shit i don't even know what you're talking about i had he-man and she-ra and i got caught like smash them together like they were making out and, uh -oh. oh that was embarrassing i was really fucking disappointed with she because i had tila and uh evelyn it's like those were the two girl characters for I, when they do like she characters there will be more girl characters but the she characters are all like different sizes it's like why is she like 20 feet tall <laughs> like just my imagination could not make the gap so that entire She-Ra universe was off the fucking table. It was not compatible with my He-Man figures. And Those were some giant tits for He-Man. <laughs> They're siblings, you know. Had I, thought oh, about it, had I thought about it like that. That's even more embarrassing. <laughs> maybe my imagination could have, uh, could have bridged a gap. I have always thought that Evil Lynn was because someone in the, someone in the creative team had an ex called Lynn. <laughs> they just really hated it. I think it was just a low-hanging Evelyn. Yeah, one. probably. Yeah, I think you're giving them too much credit, Jeff. Probably. I mean, they nearly called the uh, water character Seaman. <laughs> Yeek. You know, it's a video game. You know, that, that one made it right up to final Q&A when somebody's like, um, excuse me. <laughs> How much thought have you put into this? Not much. Okay, all right. Just go, go oh, my, oh, the, and then the shingles wheels are turning. We, and Mitch from marketing <laughs> finally said, God damn it, foiled again. Yeah, back at my last job, we had the, there was a phone coming out, and they wanted to call it the shocker. 
And it was just like, it almost made it out before finally somebody was just like, you know, no. guys. I would love to be the guy who greenlit that, knowing full well what was going to happen. So, I'd, yeah, okay, rub a stamp, get it out there, and then just watch the world burn. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, our friend, let's move on to the next one. Our, our friend Jack asks, "How do you decide on the cover art for your books?" Different. I don't. I don't really need to answer this question. <laughs> Mine's pretty straightforward. <laughs> I think we all generally commission our own art at this point. Yeah. I don't think anybody outside Bob and his specific process is uh, yeah. <laughs> going through that. Am I wrong? Uh, I still make my own covers, but it's only because I'm don't cheap. Know. I don't get to I don't get to decide since you know for me when I um when I'm working on a cover it's I take a look at which of my artists has the least on their plate at that time if they've already done work in that series then it goes back to that same artist and then I talk to the author to see if there's any special images or scenes from the book that they like if there's any special feel or vibe to it, I give that information to the artist. I tend to play art director for our publishing company, so I approve pretty much all the covers before they go out. So then I take the final look at typography and fonts and all of that, and we just, it's a multi-step process of revisions, and usually an artist will give me three or four base images that they're interested in working with and i'll pick one or two and then they send me a draft i have them tweak it they send me another draft it's usually two or three revisions and then we drop all the type onto it yeah i mean ge generally when i'm working with a cover artist uh, like a lot of cover artists will ask okay what are you looking for on the cover and you kind of give them that but they'll also ask kind of for a summary of the book um which usually comes down to if your if your if my idea for the cover is either stupid or unworkable, which gives them like you know some some other direction to go in, and in truth, sometimes they get it right. Sometimes I'll come up with an idea and, and, and it'll work, and sometimes they're right and my idea was really stupid. In which case, then I'm glad I went with the with with their direction. So, <laughs> yeah, I tend to drive us towards more thematic as opposed to strictly representational covers because we use a lot of stock image manipulation in our covers and that's a lot less expensive than painting and trying to make somebody look like the character some unique position at this point as i have um in the beginning i sort of had to shop around and um you know fill the project with who i could find and, and work with at the time but for the last several years, I've mostly just been uh, using one cover artist, and I'll go ahead and uh, plug her, because she does amazing work. We've been working together for years. It's Ashley Ruggarello of Cardboard Monet. It's the, that's the website, um, cardboardmonet.com. And you know because we've been working together for so long, we have a very good uh, relationship, a give and take. She knows kind of what I'm looking for when I'm trying to describe it and maybe not doing the best job. Um, and so, yeah, so I'll, I'll, we'll start with a concept. We'll kind of go back and forth. Um, I always like to get input because I don't think in design as well as someone who does design. So, And then it's just a matter of getting everything what, you know, getting everything to look nice and then fine-tuning down. I take back my original answer because uh, I, I forgot that I do books outside the Caverns and Creatures series. Uh, and the, the great John Luther Davis does all our shingles covers and now. Uh, the process for that is usually like, uh, I don't know, you can read the book. He, well, he, he will read the book that I send him and, and come up with a cover idea if I don't have one. But sometimes I'd say, hey, John, can you, like, if you put a toilet seat on a girl's head and a, and a petrified dick on her chin, can you make her look like a pharaoh? And he says... <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it's brilliant yeah, I, I remember the first cover i did with him which was gary's children which, which was i think about a month of us going back and forth of like okay how do we not make this look like like the pedophile's handbook <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's the idea on the that's latest true. one mine the shingling um 
I said to him that I want it to be like The Shining with the elevator scene, but instead of blood, I want semen. And uh, he's like, you know, I'm getting really good at drawing semen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've given him lots of practice. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, with, uh, with John Luther Davis, I don't think I've ever had to do more than just very minor tweaks to when he sends me an image, it's almost always, okay, let's go. Yeah, I think I've had to do Yeah, this is like, yeah. wow, that's better than the image I had in my yeah. head. Yeah, I've had to tweak like, like one that's... or two things for story canon here and there, but like that is it. Yeah. On Zombies Ain't My Homework, I, I rebuilt a character to match the cover image just because I was like, you know, I really like that picture better than I like the way I wrote the character, so I'll change which one's the fat one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm tempted to get like you know sense and sensibility and Sasquatch the cover he did for that like just blown up into a poster is uh yeah that's yeah. a great one that's yeah, a that's really a cool cover I think I would all right there's one what's your favorite shingles cover we'll we'll close out with one of our own of your of your own works to Joe you get to pick from anybody oh, okay <laughs> sorry Joe you have to pick from anybody <laughs> yes I know I there I, there we go I have to look now at it's all. toned appropriate <laughs> uh. So yeah, what's your what's your favorite shingles cover of the ones that uh, you have done? I like Action Cadabra. That is a that is a great one. It's a good one. I I think of of my books. Uh, Slaughter on Giggle Time Mountain is still my favorite cover. It's it's just the right amount of what the fuck, but still creepy. For that same reason, I'd pick uh, the monkey's penis. I think. It's just got that huge, creepy monkey face on it. Oh, and if you look closely at the guy looking down, you can just about see his thick, hairy monkey cock. <laughs> but and it's, um, you know, you don't see too much of it, so it's still safe for work. But I like the idea that on the cover of my book, the guy's just staring aghast at his hideous monkey penis <laughs> while this uh, huge chimp leers behind him. It's a great cover. Sums up the book pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I really do like the the one for Gary's children. Pretty much the guy drowning in jizz, but uh, it is hard to beat the the. I I'm a sucker for anybody who can draw a good Sasquatch. So, <laughs> for me, it's Jingle My Balls, the elf on a shelf humping a Christmas tree, <laughs> like a pole dancer. I was just like, yeah, that's exactly the image that was in my head, and that says so many bad things about me. So yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I. I'm tempted to go with Stranger's Thing for the, uh, you know, for the parody aspect of it. I think he did a fine job on that. But, uh, Jacko Pumpkins, I don't know the 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 pumpkin behind the kid is just so horrifying, and uh, I think he really put his heart into that one, and and it, I could tell he enjoyed drawing it. I'm gonna choose Jacko Pumpkins. Until, I mean, if it's for the ones that have been released. Otherwise, uh, The Mummy's Curse, which will be released next month the, with yeah. the girl with the toilet seat. I think like if anybody gets two, it's, uh, it's you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I also want to call out uh, just... I feel like we have to acknowledge Space Werewolf. From <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, Jesus Christ. That's good, but uh, but I but I gotta. That's good, but I gotta say, uh, put your hand up my ass because just just the smirk on the dummy's face oh, just yeah. sells that cover. Yeah, that, yeah. I, yeah. JLD is a goddamn genius. The, I don't even have to explain that really to her. It's just like, no, you 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 wouldn't. You, you got a little concept pump puppet and put your hand up my ass. And this is kind of a Goosebumps parody. So that, yeah. Yeah. He knows, he so knows what's going on. So I'm, still, I'm still waiting for the sequel to that one, Steve. Ah, uh, this time, this time. Man, scrolling through, it really is crazy how many of these we've done. <laughs> one a month for three years. Uh, actually, right now, E.M. Kaplan is doing 12 Days of Shingles, where she's reading through several of the existing uh, series. And we all owe her an and... apology. <laughs> we do we do so uh you should follow her on social media to hear her reviews and also you know follow her for her own releases and stuff that she does because she wrote she... 28 dicks later she doesn't get an apology <laughs> <laughs> she also wrote the true the true adventures of fandingo the fantastical so yeah she starts the day pretty fucked up 
She's got blood on her hands <laughs> and other things on her hands. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, I think that is going to do it for this episode of Authors and Dragons. We'll be back next week with a side quest, and then we will return with a game sometime around or after the holiday season. We are figuring that out. Until next time, bye! Bye! bye. Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Authors and Dragons! Authors and Dragons! Brendan, I'm coming!